Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ride Bike Waxing in UK One World channel. So, digging the flat cap, yeah, right old Devonshire farmer's way. This one, you want to check out these skis, they are bad. Okay, so here we are. Um, yeah, these are in need of some serious love. We've got gouges, slash marks, and all sorts off the bottom of these skis. Um, yeah, they're in need of a bit of love. We're going to get these looking, hopefully, ship-shape. If we go across to the other ski, the best is yet to come. We have a lovely core shot. So we're going to get some metal weld, as they call it, some base material welded into that. That is way beyond P-Texing, um, and it is nice and dry, which is a good thing. So we're going to trim this up around here, get off any loose material, get out the solder iron and melt some base material and get to work. But as you can tell, these are not pretty. They need a lot of work onto the base of these skis, to be honest. But I will do my best to make sure I can get these looking really, really good. So I'm intrigued to see the before and after um and see how we get on so stay tuned guys we're going to have a go at this core shot first but what i am going to do is clean up this this ski here and see what i'm left with once we've done that one we'll jump on this ski here we go so just before we get started on the core shot these are a solomon cross max 150 length ski with matching bindings and we'll make sure we do and work on the top coat as well as just checking the bindings over and making sure they're okay. Don't have a boot with this one, so I can't set up the distance in between. But if you have watched my previous video, here's the adjuster and an indicator. Um, this screw just up on here, if you are ever interested, when you tighten that down, it reduces the gap between here and here. And always a good test is to put a piece of paper on here, put your boot in. If you can pull the paper in and out, it's too loose. If you pull it and it rips, it's too tight. So you simply put the boot in and wind this down till you've got a resistance where you're pulling on the paper and it's coming out slowly. That is to, to adjust the toe up and down. Obviously on these bindings, you have the DIN setting screw which is just here and that's in the window just there these are currently set at four on the front and on the rear just there these are also well they're set at three uh three and a quarter just on the back but you'd adjust that din setting just here and when the boot's in obviously um you look at this marker here and this marker should then line up because we don't have any window down the side here to look at and um, when the boots actually torsioned into it you would make sure you've got the correct nose weight you actually have a look at this adjuster I think I'm right in saying on this one because I don't have the boot on the back um, to make sure that that arrow is lined up nicely to make sure you've got enough toe pressure but anyway yeah these skis flip it over it's in need of some serious love I'm going to try and set the camera up and uh, yeah, we're gonna get working on these bad boys to give you some idea on the base of the ski. It'd be nice to put this here and have a look at the before and after, and hopefully we should see a marked difference. I think you'll still obviously see the shape of this. You're not gonna lose it forever, um, but uh, it will obviously it saves this ski from being chucked out. So. Uh, Let's crack on, let's get the camera set up and let's have a go at this base. Okay, so let's get some fresh wipe. We've just basically extensively cleaned the base of this ski. We're going to get a, a cloth. <laughs> let's see how, uh, how clean it is. Well, the ski is coming up cleaner, which is a good thing. Yeah, that is, uh, that's not pretty. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That's why I'm here. That is why I am here. And this is what I love to do. Yeah. 
I think we'll be should, subject to how this goes in. I'm going to quickly show you what I'm going to be using. I'll get last that band on there, I think, to get these out of the way. And uh, let's bring that back up. There we go. Right, okay. So, where did I put it? So, Rebel Square. They call it metal base, it's not metal base, but it's obviously a base material. Um, and basically, we're going to melt this with a solder iron um, into here. But we're going to clean this up first, so you know, we'll just basically melt it in, melt it in, keep working it, and melting it, and working it. Um, to basically give some structure to the base of that, because you can't P-TEX onto this, because it will just fall straight back out again. So, uh, let's clean this up with a Stanley knife, tidy it all up, get the solder iron on, make sure that's nice and hot, and uh, crack on. So, one solder iron, one metal base, as they call it. This is um, supplied by Rebel Square, a company that kind of does stuff like that. You can buy this, um, would you believe, just these two little bits here are about £4. And we're going to clean up this base. We're going to get this working so it's nice and hot. Turn the gas on, checking my window, I've got heat, let's heat that up, just filled it up with some fresh gas as they say, and we'll have a go at sorting this out. Okay, so that's dried pretty good. We're just going to try and take some of this top layer off. And uh, we'll get that scrape back down, hopefully. And uh, then we can work on the rest of the base and the rails. Okay, so apologies, my camera actually ran out of charge and I didn't realise and I'm uh, cracking on with this ski. Uh, but a quick update of where we are. I've got the full base scraped on this. I've done some P-Tex um, and obviously got that nice and flat so it's looking a lot smoother. I've got that metal base melted into the core. Um, we're gonna just drop a little bit of P-Tex just in here. Um, but I've been working on this divot and this massive core shot that we had. Now this is P-Tex on the top, so we're going to get the uh, scraper nice and sharp and we're going to run that over the top, different di uh, diagonal angles, front and back, front and back. We're going to get the base looking as good as possible 
And then we get onto these side, base and side edge sharpening. I didn't want to start those first until I got this core shot done, just purely and simply because um, I'm going to be scraping over it and I didn't want to dull this edge. So uh, we'll get this looking as good as possible. We're going to get onto these edges. I'll pop you on time lapse. We're going to get this nice and sharp. I'm going to finish this ski up and make sure it is as good as possibly uh, possible, possibly possible, as good as possible. Um, and then we'll compare this ski to the other one. Um, so I'm going to get this one waxed and scraped and then we're going to work on the other ski because the other ski is pretty well cut up as well. And we'll get that looking nice and flat and we'll get some wax in there. So stay tuned, guys. I'm going to pop you on time lapse. I'm going to sit you just in the stand just here and off we go. So let's crack on. So fully base scraped now. Um, we've got that core shot there, which is looking good. It's very smooth now, which is great. So I'm really pleased how that's come out. A lot of work has gone into the base of this ski, trying to get it as flat as possible. And I'll show you the before and after. Fortunately, I can't lose every single mark. I don't have a machine for that, but I say once we lay some wax down on this, it'll look great. So I'm gonna get the edges sharpened. I've done one side as you've seen just because I've been waiting for the uh, metal core base uh, there to dry. Um, you can just see it there in the picture, but that is a lot better. And that is gonna perform well and hopefully last a long, long time. So we'll get some wax on that and you'll lose that anyway. But yeah, looking good. So let's get on to the edges. I'm gonna do the base base, then I will just do that edge again and that edge again, just in case I've damaged anything with the scraping. And uh, yeah, let's crack on. are super sharp we've got some quite deep gouging here on the rails there's not really a lot i can do that i can't fill the metal up unfortunately but there we say we've got a sharp edge all the way up i have dulled the uh, nose and the tail um, just in about four to five inches to reduce any catching um, but they are super sharp super shiny removed all the rust we've got these bases as flat as possible they were like a plowed field um, so we're going to lay some wax down and um, see how these, or this ski, should we say, look. Once obviously waxed and scraped and polished, um, I've got some new tools and, as well which have arrived, which you'll see in a second. Uh, obviously once I've stripped the wax off and then we'll compare this ski to the other ski um, and see what the before and after looks like. It's always quite nice. It's a bit more of a long-winded way of doing it because it's quite nice to do all the edges and all the edges and all the bases at the same time. So reducing the mess but uh, for the benefit of this video I thought I'd take my time over this Christmas break and uh, bring it to you so you can see the before and after between one ski and the other so uh, let's get some wax laid down and uh, let's get some juice back into the base of this ski off this ski we're gonna get my scraper nice and sharp we get a nice sharp edge there we go get the plastic out of that try and keep it clean and tidy so we're gonna strip this off and have a look and see what it looks like so stay tuned Oh, 
50k. I think you'll agree. What a massive difference between this ski and this ski. Now, this one was the worst one. I'll put a picture on the screen now from what it did look like. Um, this had so many gouges and uh, nicks and knocks and cut, cuts to it. It was unbelievable. We have got it so smooth. Without actually putting it through a machine, I think I've done a very good job, <laughs> if I must say so myself. Um, the ski itself looked like this, with all these garages, quite prominent. Um, it did look rather battered. And now we've got this. Now you can still see a few marks within the base, but that isn't going to um, affect the performance of the ski. But the biggest thing is we had that core shot, which was just here. If I can change the light, you'll see the tip material being slightly darker. You can just see it just there. That is filled now. Um, and we've got some P-Tex in there as well, which is that shiny bit you can see just here. But I think you'll agree, um, I'm really pleased how that core shot's come out. Um, I don't do very many of them, to be honest. And um, with that metal base we get in there, melt it, it comes up an absolute treat. The edges are nice and sharp. We've got that lovely contrast, that nice dark enriched wax bottom um i'm gonna make this ski look as good as this ski so as if like magic let's make that one look like this one here we go okay guys these skis solomon cross max skis are looking so much better i'll put the before video up just on the screen here or here somewhere um and they were in a quite a bad way, to be fair. This ski had a really big core shot uh, in it. So we got some of that metal um, uh, metal base in there and we welded that in with a soldering iron. Um, a little bit hot because it did smoke a little bit. I tried to keep the temperature down, but it's very difficult with the soldering iron because it's one heat. Um, but we got that in there. We smoothed it over. I have P-Text it, done it again and again and again. I have P-Text both of these skis in areas. I have base scraped these skis. Uh, I have spent hours on these skis because they were just so pitted. Um, really could do with a full base sand really um, in a proper, should I say, machine workshop, which obviously I sadly don't have. Uh, this is purely all manual labour. Um, other than my new little toy, my little rotary brush to get all the wax out. And I must admit that does make my life a little bit easier. I've worked very hard on these skis and I think you'll agree they've come up really, really well considering what they did look like. Um, we've got a nice dark base there. There is still some scoring in the base of this ski, but it won't affect the performance in any way, shape or form because um, they are just super, super smooth. So we're going to get some good speed out of these skis, I would like to think. The edges are extremely sharp, picking up the edge of my nail just there, which is lovely and uh yeah i'm really really happy with these like i say a lot of work have gone into these skis just to get the bases as flat uh, as possible because they have the quite a few quite a few marks should we say but guys don't forget if you're snowboarding or you're skiing get your boots out get them on your feet walk around your house before you hit the slopes make sure that they are fitting and are as good as possible as they can be for ski boots and snowboard boots because that way then when your skis are performing well and your boots fit and they're comfortable and they're not wet damaged or broken in any way shape or form you'll have an ace day on the mountain but until next time guys thank you very much indeed for watching the rider waxing and uk one wheel workshop this is another set of skis done i've got a snowboard coming up just after this one so if you like your snowboards stay tuned subscribe hit the like comment do whatever you like but thank you very much indeed for watching but until next time i will see you soon